Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Vampire. And we're about to have some uncomfortable conversations here, guys. We need to have a chat with Nurse Branica and Dr. Tippett about the medical error that we found in the morgue. But before we do that, check this out. This is where we were dealing with uh, Mr. Cox at the end of the last episode. And we have a letter nearby where he was sitting. So, crumpled letter. I'm tired of your shit, Clay. What the fuck did you do? All the bloody docs are gossiping about how my husband has just got that stupid kid. How many times did I tell you to count 20 before drawing your blade? How can we expect to do proper business and have people obey if you keep on killing everyone who dares cross you? Now rumor says some bloke from the dead's family are looking for you, and one of them even swore to kill you. Don't come home tonight. I've seen strange men patrolling the streets. They may be some commie militia or something like that sent to arrest you. Go to a safe place for a few days. Maybe go to the hospital or Whitechapel? Make yourself useful for once by checking if any business could be settled over there. When the situation is calmer, I'll send a wet boot boy so you know to come back. Edwina. New hint available. Oh. Alrighty. Where did he go? Where'd you go, Mr. Cox? You still hanging out here somewhere? And okay, there's Brannigan. Milton, up oh, there you are. We've dodged death so many times. <laughs> hey, Doc. Personal question. Oh, we got two. What can you tell me about your marriage, Clay? Marriage is the sweetest cage, they say. Well, I found myself locked in one with a wild animal. You mean your wife keeps you on your toes? No, I mean we both have claws and we both love to bite. Ah. Am I right to assume your wife's letter pissed you off, Clay? I was so mad, I threw away the knife she got me when we got married. Your wife gave you a knife as a wedding present. That knife has always been my lucky charm. If I'd had it in my hand when I got stabbed on that pier, I'd not have been wounded. That shows you. A lucky charm? I never would have taken you as the superstitious type. We all have our flaws, Doc. Mine's to have my weapon of choice for when the really dirty business comes around. Do you want it back? I don't need it here, but if you'd be kind enough to bring it to me, I'd be really grateful. A grateful Clay Cox? I might just find your knife and bring it back to you to see that happen. I can give you directions, but I'd be surprised if you managed to find it. My hideout isn't meant to be found easily. New investigation, tool of the trade. Cool, and it is orange, which if we're following kind of standard World of Warcraft color scheme, we can't really go be over there yet. <laughs> I'll leave you for now, Mr. Cox. Well, no, all of those are orange. Let's see. Local investigation. Let's go ahead and take care of what we need to take care of first. We need to go ahead and find. Hi. Who are you? Opium? We're finding all kinds of drugs. I haven't got to talk to you yet. Please, sir. I need help bad. What's going on? I'm Blight, sir. Newton Blight. I've lost my mate. Can't find him anywhere. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed from the Pembroke Hospital. Please calm down and give me more details. Oswald and myself were both infantry, sir. We were en route for the hospital, but... Well, we had a disagreement. And Oswald ran off towards the canal. How long have you been searching for him? I, c I can't go there. Too many rats by the water. Fucking rats. Can't stand them since the war, sir. Can't stand them at all. Don't be ashamed, Mr. Blight. 
Many soldiers who survived the trenches suffer from musophobia. I'll see what I can do for your friend. I hope it isn't the guy that, huh, cockstabbed. What can you tell me about yourself? I'm Oswald's best friend. We served in the same regiment, sir. We've taken care of each other since we came back from the front. This is a dangerous part of town. What are you doing here? We were looking for the Pembroke Hospital. He... We both need help. T treatment, I mean. To get some sleep. Just need to feel better, sir. Let's go ahead and give him a checkup. Do you need medical attention, sir? No thanks, sir. Unless you're able to get rid of every rat in London. If I'm thirsty enough. Okay. Why do you stay here now that Mr. Thatcher's back? It's complicated. Since the war, Oswald's been really nervous with the idea of entering any hospital. And me, I've got my own issues. Can you speak about them? Rats, sir. Even seeing one, they turn me. Just want to run. It's that fear that stopped me from going after Oswald when he left. Okay. Personal questions, your phobia of rats. We'll get to that here in a second. What can you tell me about the war, Mr. Blight? If you want to speak about it, of course. War was... Well, you know, sir. The stench of death everywhere. Your mates lying bleeding in the mud. Just praying to make it through and get home. Bloody nightmare. Did you know Oswald Thatcher before the war? No. We met in the battlefield. I think we were in the same boat to France. We've stuck together ever since. I fought in France too. I served as a field surgeon. But it was not uncommon to repel an assault, especially at night. Yeah. The first time I was wounded, I had to protect the infirmary from hostiles. Twice. Well, thank you for that. You are always welcome at the Pembroke Hospital. As a former officer, I'll be honored to welcome a fellow veteran. I'm not giving up on bringing Oswald back to the hospital. I just need to convince him that he needs some help. Perhaps he needs to reach that decision by himself. Could you speak to him? He doesn't usually listen to doctors, but perhaps because you've been through it, you can talk him round. Uh, possibly. What caused your phobia of rats, Newton? It happened last year following an artillery attack. I was trapped for two days in a hole under two dead soldiers. And there were rats. Go on. They started eating me as soon as I dozed. Gnawing at my ears, my fingers, lips. I couldn't move. Couldn't call for help. I see. No, you don't. You have no idea what it is to wake up buried under bodies. Fucking vermin eating your flesh. Oswald. He found me and saved me. And that became your best buddy. Goodbye, Mr. Blight. Take care of yourself. Okay, so we need to try and find... Quite a bit of blood quality Have you found there. Oswald? Not yet, sir. I need more information first. All right. What do you want to know? There we go. I was wondering because these questions actually disappeared. What can you tell me about your friend? His name is Oswald Thatcher. We survived the war together. Oswald is nervous and quite fragile since we came back from the war. We actually needed to do this first before we went for the medical checkup. Where was your friend the last time you saw him? He went down by the canal. He didn't want to go to the hospital. I think he went to the sewers on purpose. So I couldn't go after him. Ooh. I have all the information I need for now. 
If I find anything out about your friend, I'll let you know as soon as I can. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Well, that would be a new investigation. I wonder if there's anyone else that we may have missed talking to here at the hospital. But speaking of talking to someone, time for some uh, uncomfortable conversations. We just have to find them. There's Mortimer. Perhaps I should have considered the offer from that Cadigan fellow. Oh. Yeah, we want to talk to the doctor last. It's Nurse Brannigan I want to have to chat with first. Dorothy Crane. Beatrice. There's Mr. Hooks. Because I just want to get her her thoughts on everything first and foremost. There she is. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Oh, now, oh, she's staring into my soul again. <laughs> Tell me what Dr. Tippett's did. I know his mistake caused a patient's death. If I had not covered up his error, Dr. Tippett's would have been fired from this hospital. I could not let that happen. You can't allow your emotions to dictate your conduct concerning patients, Nurse Brannock. Look around you, Dr. Reed. Do you really think we can afford to lose a brilliant practitioner like Dr. Tippett's in our situation? Hmm. Okay. Let's see. I think that's the middle ground. Perhaps you did it with the best intentions, Nurse Brannigan, but you took a great risk. Must I remind you that a man died? You mean you've never made a mistake? Never covered your tracks? Come on, Doctor. I wasn't born yesterday. All right. That's pretty much that. She has no remorse over it. She thinks she did what she had to do. Goodbye, Nurse. Call me if you need assistance. And now, Dr. Tippett's. Where did you go? There you are. You having a chat with the mistress of the night? Nope. Good evening, Dr. Tippett's. Dr. Reed, any good news to share? Oh, Lord, no. Kokoran, I want you to tell me about Mr. Connor. How did he die? What happened? He was my patient. He died because of my mistake. That's the blunt truth. Who was this patient? I don't know. Some sick man from the docks. Maybe a fisherman. I had no time to talk with him. No one claimed a body. What was the nature of the mistake? It was a twofold error. My diagnosis was wrong, and the administered dosage was too strong. Why not stop practicing? Are you mad? I killed that man, I admit it, and it won't happen again. I have saved so many lives since then. That's fair enough. I'll cover for you. Yeah, we need we need all the good doctors we can get. I will cover for you, Dr. Tippett's. By keeping what happened to Mr. Connor to myself. I... I don't know what to say, actually. I can't exactly force you to become my accomplice. You didn't force me. This is my decision to make. I believe you're still of use to the hospital, considering the situation. Then I can make you this promise. As soon as the epidemic is eradicated, I will resign. Just gonna have yourself a... Ooh, a hundred shillings. Have yourself a nice retirement. What will you do after your resignation? Do you have a plan? I always fancied visiting Cyprus. Such a beautiful island. I could buy a house there, by the sea. Read poetry and wait for death. Two out of three ain't bad. Okay. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. 
the harder they fall. And we have got investigation succeeded. Now we need to go talk to uh, Dr. Swansea. He's up here near us, and then we can evolve because we've got to use all this sweet, sweet XP. Please, Jonathan, come in. Alas, poor Yorick. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body. Biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> the, you, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea, but my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead? Unalive? Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. Uh-huh. Dr. Edgar Swansea, 6,000 XP. Yeah, I don't think that we're going to be able to drink from him anytime soon. Okay, so we've got... Recovering, recovering. And we're missing someone. There's Newton Blight and that... Ah! That must be the guy that we need to save from the sewers eventually. Okay. There is an absurd poetry to my situation. Physician, heal thyself. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. Oh, first, uh, first name basis. This is not amusing. Let's see. I'm not some doe-eyed student, Edgar. I understand we both have something to gain from this relationship. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. And then do that. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Okay, another person we may have missed. Is there anything here to read? Ooh. Warning letter. Pembroke Hospital, 25th of October. Dear Dr. Swansea, I must inform you of my deepest reservations concerning the Dr. Thorough Strickland and Harvey Fittick case. Mr. Fittick has been hospitalized after a severe work injury. He may permanently lose the use of his arm if not treated adequately. Dr. Strickland claims that a surgical procedure may save the man's arm completely. I say it may also severe its functions for good if complications arise. Our young colleague is an audacious and daring surgeon who might prove a great professional in a few years, but for now he lacks the skills to perform such a risky procedure. Need I remind you of the mistakes he made in the past? Since Dr. Strickland refuses to listen to me, I strongly advise you to forbid him to perform such a hazardous experiment. Very respectfully, Dr. Ackroyd. 
mistakes of the past, huh? Gonna have to have a chat and figure out what that is. Letter of Rakesh Chandana or Chandana. Oh, I like th this is uh, this is the guy who runs the current morgue, not the one that we saw that was filled with unpleasantness. A short letter carefully written, destined to Dr. Swansea. Pembroke Hospital, 4th of August. Dear Dr. Swansea, I will be glad to manage the temporary morgue as soon as it's opened. As I have already told you, I was a doctor during the war and I'll be glad to serve my country again. I know it's not the same being a physician for the dead as it is for the living, but I believe it is important to welcome and take good care of our departed too. Rest assured I will do my best to fully perform this new duty to the best of my ability. Concerning the questions of my qualifications, I'm sorry I can't give you anything more valuable than my parole. I swear to you that my regiment made me a doctor during the war, and that I saved many lives. If my word is not enough, you can contact the military administration to verify my experience and skills. They will confirm that even if I never followed any medical studies, the war taught me what a doctor really needs to know. Always sincerely, Rakesh Jadana, former doctor. Interesting. So he became kind of a doctor through experience more than study. Talk to the hospital benefactor. We need to talk to uh, Strickland. I know he's over here somewhere. Oh, sodium hypo. All this, all the drugs are just revealing themselves. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? Rumors of blackmail. Oh, we have more hints here. Okay. Ackroyd's aversion for modern methods. What do you think of Dr. Ackroyd's aversion to modern medical methods? It's a shame he's so narrow-minded. Dr. Swansea taught me that science is about exploring uncharted territory. I'm convinced that's true. With the influenza and all that's going on, you should put your differences aside, don't you think? Why is it so difficult to work together? I believe that if Dr. Ackroyd had been the one to discover the transfusion process, he would be the first to recommend its use. So you believe it's just a question of jealousy? Pride. Dr. Ackroyd is as proud as he is blinded by his obsolete concept of medical science. That's fair. Thero's medical skills have been questioned in the past. And hint locked, so this is the final hint, I suppose, for his blood quality. What about Dr. Ackroyd? Hint locked, hint locked. Rumors of blackmail. Have you heard any talk of blackmail going on in the hospital? If you're running some official inquiry, you had better question the patients. They know more than the staff, especially old Miss Jones. Alrighty. I didn't know. Tell me, Thoreau, what's the real cause of your dislike for Dr. Ackroyd? He refuses to admit that your blood transfusion technique is the only way to save Mr. Fiddick. I'm convinced we must use it. What Dr. Ackroyd really said is that you lack the skill to perform this operation efficiently. Is there anything you have to say about this? It's a false conceit. Dr. Ackroyd secretly envies your reputation. His jealousy blinds him. I'm not the real target here. Hmm. Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him? Or to prove your point? Both. Fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. All right. Oh, we already had gone through that. Still, very interesting. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. He's becoming less likable. Drugs. All right. 
Well, what should we do now? Let's go ahead and check on our uh, our quests. We got low quality for Mortimer. He's gonna. I guess it's gonna take time for them to feel better. Um, these guys. Okay, the harder they fall, succeeded. Tools of the trade. Retrieved the knife of Clay Cox. Find the local command post of the Guard of Prywin. Yeah, we, we, we tried that. Reach the pharmacy. Oh, yeah. We do need to uh, reach that pharmacy. We got that a while back. Okay. Well. Let's go ahead. No investigations. Let's go ahead and track that one. It's our secondary. And I'm wondering where that's going to send us. Okay, the pharmacy is right here near the docks, and our benefactor is right outside taking care of some patients. Unknown. Oh! Is this the vampire lady we saw before? The flu took my dear wife, Emily. I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again. <laughs> Mr. Rainfield, that's no way to talk. You're in good hands here, and we'll have, be up again soon enough. Have some flies, Mr. Renfield. <laughs> now do me a kindness and get some sleep. I'll be back round later. Your words are kind, the blessings of an angel. You're the sweet, sweet lady of mercy. Uh huh. Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vamp. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. Yeah. It's nice to see another vampire who's not trying to devour random people. Apologies. You've taken me by surprise. I'm very happy to see you. The pleasure is mine, Doctor. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions, but a rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, if you prefer, has been compromised. Have any of the patients given you trouble? These poor souls have so little left to live for. I do my best to ease their pain. Okay. The world would be a better place if it were cared for by women like you. You make me blush. I am simply a necessary evil. Pardon my boldness, your ladyship, but I have questions concerning this condition we share. As a newborn, your hunger for answers is rivaled only by your thirst for blood. But the questions need weight. I'm a scientist. My trade is in the deciphering of mysteries, and I need information to feed my mind. I will gladly answer every question you have, but first... Prove yourself capable of resolving my predicament without eating the culprit. <laughs> Quid pro quo. Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. Okay. 
Who would be so foolish as to threaten you, a kindred spirit? Even if it were the case, and I highly doubt it, a vampire would have asked for something more valuable than money. My suspicions lean toward a patient or their family. What are your expectations? Please be precise. As the newly appointed surgeon of this hospital, you are in an excellent position to ask innocent questions and deftly learn the identity of my blackmailer. Gotcha. But... If we're dealing with an ordinary criminal, surely you've the means to deal with it yourself, if I may. As immortal tradition doth dictate, all fangs and hypnotic eyes ablaze, the blood would run like a river. That's what I hope to avoid. Violence has a tendency to spiral out of control. Good call. Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. Uh-huh. Is it true? Now aren't you the blunt one? Well... Excuse my impertinence, your ladyship. This is not an interrogation. I assure you that this line of questioning is in your best interest. In all honesty, I'm not simply a patron to the hospital. My visits serve a dual purpose. Dr. Swansea has been treating my condition with a revolutionary technique of blood transfusion. It seems you are a specialist in the domain. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. Alrighty. Well, it's just nice to see a friendly fanged face here, so at least there's that. But we will go ahead and end the episode here, guys, and we will pick it up next time. Hope you all have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.